Hello and welcome to another video of So You Want to Learn ZBrush, this time to make 3D printable models. This is my forte, this is what I do for a living, I've done it since 2018, so I have a lot of tips that should be helpful for you. So let's get to it. Step one, you need to make things watertight, and by that I mean a truly solid mesh. So if you're making a model that has clothes, pretty standard, you don't want a gap between like the shirt and the body. It needs to be the same mesh. Same thing goes for like the body itself. You don't want a weird hole in their head or in their chest cavity. This is a really common problem with people that haven't a 3D printable before because like the mouth obviously is the mouth, it's an open hole with some teeth. Um, my models, if the mouth is closed, obviously, it is just completely solid. I don't sculpt the tongue or the teeth or like that, just completely solid. You can make things watertight by a few different methods. Um, I have a video on my YouTube, I'll link it in the description. But generally speaking, Dynamesh is a really quick and dirty way to do it, but honestly the best way to do it is um, Booleans. So Boolean Union, that'd be fantastic. But if you have issues in your mesh, like other small holes or like shared vertices, you're going to have other problems. I rely on a software called Mesh Mixer to also double check that I have no errors in my mesh, but um, watertight. Step one. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about, so number two, is you need to understand the scale you're working at. If you're making just like general figurines are around like three, four inches. You don't really need to worry about this very much, but um, I work in miniatures. So 28 millimeter scale is really standard. That means from the base of their little foot to the top of their eyeball is 28 millimeters, which is like, you know, an inch-ish. <laughs> it's really small, hence miniature. Um, I actually do kind of tend towards breaking this rule almost. Um, I sculpt normal features. I barely enlarge the eyes, but on, Generally speaking, I want to enhance and exaggerate some details. Like if I do proper stitch lines, you are not going to see that. So I do like big chunky stitches. Again, that can kind of change how the render is going to look. So I try to strike a difference or like not difference, but in between of looking really good in a render as if it's going to be printed like this big. Some people do print myself that big too. So I want to make sure it works either way, but still being paintable. Um, definitely, I don't have the easiest stuff to paint, but I'm getting a lot better, and um, my monsters are easy to paint. But with humans, we've got, we got a lot going on in our face, a lot of details, and we're so small. <laughs> so just understand the scale you're working at and do the best that you can with it. Just keep it in your mind, because you might do a ton of work, that's for nothing. Like just one last thing to put on here, if you are sculpting human miniatures, do not sculpt pores. I see a lot of like professional artists come into this space. Uh, that worked in the industry before, and they will still like render the eyebrows and like skin pores. You're not gonna see it, even at this bit. Just don't bother. <laughs> On to the next point. So number three, you need to understand practical limitations of the 3D printer and of using it. So a lot of display pieces aren't gonna move very much, but they still are going to be moved. There's nothing more disappointing than printing something, cleaning it, painting it, and it breaks. So you really wanna make sure like, that you're making stuff that is not gonna just fall apart. So 3D printers have gotten so good that like, honestly, you can print like crazy fragile stuff. Doesn't mean you should. <laughs> I mean, like if your audience understands they're gonna print stuff and put it in a glass box and never be touched again, sure. But most people use it for miniatures or they paint them. So they're gonna be touching it, spinning it around, dropping it a lot, let's be real. So you wanna bulk things up a little bit. Most of my miniatures, like the hand pose will be like this, obviously by their side, but you know, like this, fingers apart. And I will inflate the fingers so it's like, kind of like a mitten. <laughs> it still looks better than it sounds just because of the way that I like, will merge them together. But the point thing is I don't need individual fingers to be painted unless it's something very dramatic, but even then bulk up tiny details. And you don't need like little flying belts everywhere. Like really think about it. If you're designing something to be a pain, is it worth it? I have models that have like flowing hair in the wind and it makes the model so cool. So I think that's worth it. But a little belt flying off of them, maybe just like stick that to them. Maybe that doesn't matter very much. Again, it's kind of a fun thing to think about as an artist. So like picking and choosing your battles. So just keep that in mind. Okay, these last points are just kind of like tips and tricks, except the first one I am pretty serious about. Whether you are designing 3D printable models for a hobby or for selling them, buy a 3D printer. I don't know why this needs to be said, but I, there are a lot of people out there that sell models even 
they've never 3D printed. I don't understand this. They'll spend 900 on the software, 1,000 on their tablet. You can get a little resin printer for under 200 bucks. Get one. <laughs> They're so cool. And more than that, like if you do it professionally, it's at least a tax deduction at the very least. But if you're designing something to be used, you want to test it. I know you can have other people test it and stuff, but like there's something about the learning curve as a craftsman, you know, of doing it yourself and getting that your own information. Because I've had people print my stuff and sometimes they give me wrong feedback unintentionally, you know, like they're like, oh, this part is really fragile. And I have printed it and I'm like, not really. I have painted that. I have dropped that. And then I'll ask some more questions like, oh yeah, no, I dropped it on concrete from six feet. I'm like, yeah, it's going to break. But if I didn't know that, I would have just taken their feedback with no other thought in my head. I would have overcorrected something that didn't need to be corrected, if that makes sense. Generally, listen to your customers, obviously. But like, have the common sense because you've tried it yourself. It's very important. And then my last follow-up, this is just a tip, is Mesh Mixer. You don't have to use a software, but it is free, and it's a way that I like to double check my models, make supports, and um, scale them. Um, but that's everything for this video. I didn't talk about too much about selling them. If you want to know more about selling specifically 3D printable models, I can make a video on that too. But uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.